What's good, everybody? Welcome into our weekly MMA-only episode of The Early Edge. And I am fired up this week. I am the coach. We are powered, as always, by the almighty sports line. And there is no show. There is no capper in the world of MMA. And I will wait who is hotter than our guy that we are lucky enough to have here at Sportsline. So let's bring in the star of the show and waste no time. This is a really big week. That's not a pay-per-view. Ian Parker, I'm not sure if when you walked in today you still had smoke coming out of your ears because you've been so freaking red hot. Let me just uh, let the people know about your record the last couple of weeks. Two weeks ago, UFC 264, the hardest show of the year to handicap, 5-1 and one plus your parlay hit. Last week, Four and one, plus your parlay hit. You said, hey, how about I throw a little combate main event best bet out there on Sportsline, which you write all the breakdowns for. If you're not following us on Sportsline, what are you doing? You hit that one as well. What is your secret sauce, sir? Well, I also not to, you know, toot my own horn, but Bellator, we also hit our straight pick in our parlay last week as well. So that was uh that was a lot of fun. And apparently. Picking winners is not always the best way to go, according to some people on social media, as you so kindly handled uh, to those out there. Uh, listen, it's about studying. It's about understanding the sport. It's about knowing styles and matchups. And um, listen, what goes on up here, sometimes I can't explain it. I'm not going to complain about it either. We're just going to keep doing this all the way to, like you say, right to the pay window. So let's go. We say it all the time, entertainment, education. Now, I'm the entertainment part. He's the education part. Don't think for a second. That you're sitting at home, and it's not to slight anybody, but he's a pro. This is what we do for a living. So enough with the stupid tweets when you're standing in line at the pay window waiting to cash the tickets. I'm done with those. All right, here we go. Now, this is a really, really big week. I mentioned that. Now, the main event is, I think, one of the best main events that we're going to have the entire year. Corey Sanhagen taking on TJ Dillashaw. Before we get into the picks, kind of tell the people at home, that may not be familiar on why this is such a big deal for both and what TJ Dillashaw in particular has on the line. Yeah, you know, TJ Dillashaw has got everything on the line here. Uh, he tested positive for EPO. For those that don't know, that's blood doping. Uh, same thing that Lance Armstrong did. And according to a lot of people, he was accused of it for a long time. Finally, kind of got caught. Hate to say it that way. You don't want to believe it. You know, he was the guy that beat Henan Barrow when nobody was beating Barrow. And then he was very dominant until he lost to Henry Cejudo. And, you know, when you see a guy like Dillashaw, <coughs> excuse me, who was a champion, a dominant one, you know, rose up through the Ultimate Fighter show. You hate to really think that he's been cheating the whole time. So after a two-year layoff, he's clean. As far as we know, he has not tested positive yet. Then again, it could happen on fight night. I pray to God it doesn't happen. We don't know what TJ we are going to get. And then on the other side, you have someone, Corey Sandhagen. These guys have trained together before. So there's, a, there's known facts on who's got the better end of each other, who's frustrated who. We'll get into that later in the show. But Sandhagen is the hottest prospect in the division. Now he's a contender. You know, coming off his loss to Aljamain Sterling, he's bounced back. So he might be getting TJ at the right time. We just don't know what TJ we're going to get because we haven't seen him fight clean. We're going to do that on Saturday night. Yeah, a full two years off, a two-year suspension for TJ Dillashaw. And he told Brett Okamoto, who I love at ESPN, he told Brett, hey, listen, I'm very open about this because I want to put it in my rearview mirror. Now, how you do that is get a win. We'll have a pick from this fight uh, coming up in our main event. But also, Sanhagen, he's a beast. And he called what T.J. Dillashaw did gross, quote, <laughs> gross to do gross. anything like what he did. So there's not a whole lot of, of good blood uh, between these two uh, former teammates, sparring partners, whatever you want to call them. All right, let's jump right in because we got several best bets on the board today for my guy Ian Parker. Let's start, though, a little reverse. Let's go with our parlay first because the second fight of the night is the first leg of this parlay. So give me a three-fighter parlay that now takes those high odds and brings them into plus money. We're going to start off here <coughs> with Sajara Eubank. She's coming back from a little bit of a layoff. Look, Sajara is excellent on the ground. As we saw in her last couple of fights, her improvements in her striking really says it all. She's finally putting it all together. The mental block is gone. She's going in there confident, got a great team behind her, and she's fighting someone that I hate to say it this way, way down on the totem pole in the division. This is more of a bounce back from a layoff fight for Eubanks. She should get this done with no problem. And at the high odds, coach, that's how we're going to maximize the value. All right. One of my favorite fights that's been talked about for a while, it's been moved back. Adrian Yanez versus Randy Costa, the battle of 
really highly touted prospects. Both guys knock out artists. The difference here, I think that Yanez is just better everywhere. I think he's the better striker. We've seen him defend takedowns. You know, we haven't seen Costa really battle adversity at all. I've seen Yanez in some wars, especially in days before the UFC. I believe he gets it done here. His odds start off at minus 180. They've gone over 200. That's for a reason. People got a great price if you got on him really early. Last but not least, Kyler Phillips. This is a guy in his last fight that was a pretty heavy underdog and dominated in his win. He is such an improved fighter from his wrestling to his striking. I think he's really putting it all together. And against Pavia, this is a great matchup for Phillips. That's going to anchor our parlay. And I really love that plus 151 here. I love it. And do I need to remind people the last two weeks we have hit our parlays in the show. Two weeks in a row. All right, let's get into some straight fights now. Let's go to the final fight on the prelim card. Middleweights, Pina Soriano, minus 110. Brendan Allen, minus 110. Translation, this is an even fight as far as Vegas is concerned. But what do you say? I think this is only an even fight because Brendan Allen, I think, was rushed up the division a little too quickly, and he's fought maybe a little bit of higher-level competition. Here's my issue with Brendan Allen, although I believe that he is destined to be a top-five guy in the division at some point if he is able to understand who he is as a fighter. This is a guy who is an ex excellent submission fighter, okay? But sometimes he likes to prove himself with striking, and that's when he gets himself in trouble. In his fight against Sean Strickland, he came out with... No plan. He wanted to box and improve and show his improved striking skills and he ended up getting, he lost really badly and got finished, which really never happened on the feet before. So then he comes back out and he wins by submission. However, he's fighting a guy in Punaheli Soriano, who is his coach, Eric Nisik, who's one of the top two or three coaches in the world has said, I've never felt power like this at this weight class before. On top of that, Puna is a national wrestling champion. All right, so you have a guy who can defend takedowns and who's going to be the way better striker with the power against a guy who sometimes gets caught up in the moment of brawling. You give me Soriano on minus 110. It's a tough fight to cap. This Even numbers are for a reason, but I really like Soriano at these odds here. All right, take these nuggets. Take this information, what it's all about, and then apply it to your place, whatever you decide to do. Straight? Probably whatever it is, take the information. You can't get that anywhere else. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now, on the main card, uh, we've got several women's fights throughout the evening. This one I really like. Flyweights, Miranda Maverick, minus 150 favorite. Take it on Macy Barber. She comes back at plus 125. <laughs> what do you like? We're going to start off on the Macy Barber side here. So with Macy Barber, you know, she was on a really big streak and she was a huge favorite against Roxanne Modafieri and she lost really badly. And in that fight, she tore ACL, had a really a, a bad knee surgery. She was out for a while. She then came in, she came back and she got, she had a fight against another tough matchup where she just kept going with the striking and she was losing, you know, where she was able, she used to be able to impose her will and wrestle. And I just, I don't see the improvements there. She is fighting someone in Miranda Maverick who's got a tremendous fight IQ. And in my opinion, stylistically, this works so well for her because Barbara's going to come forward, be very predictable to wrestling. Maverick's going to be the better grappler, the better striker, again, the smarter fighter. And in her last fight, Maverick fought Jillian Robertson, where she was out grappled, somehow bounced back after losing round one and beat someone in Robertson who's fought way higher competition. I think Maverick should have been minus 175 here. I don't think Barbara's bounced back from the time off or the injury, and I don't think she's really made a jump into the loss to Roxy. I like Miranda Maverick here. For those of you who are brand new to MMA or brand new to our show, kind of our baseline, if you're wondering, because it's different than football, basketball, baseball, that minus 200 is kind of our baseline for anything above it. We like to put in the parlay, but anything below it, we like to bet straight. Uh, and Miranda Maverick certainly fits into that mold. Even if the odds go to where Ian believes they should be, they <coughs> should still be below that minus 200. Now, Absolutely. let's move into the co-main event of the evening, and it's another women's matchup. Aspen Ladd, a minus 200 favorite. Macy Chiazon, plus 165 as the underdog. What do you like? This is an interesting matchup here. If you would have asked me a year ago, I would have said go Aspen Ladd because she came off a really big win after losing. Uh, she came, after Sorry, after losing, all right, she came back and bounced back against Yana Kunitskaya in a very, very convincing win. However, <laughs> double ACL injury. And what happens to young fighters sometimes when they've never been – usually these young fighters don't get injured like this, right? So they pretty much are very active. They're not used to being off for this long, not used to bouncing back. Not many have done what Dominic Cruz has done off these torn ACLs, come back and be successful, understand the experience of being in the cage. You know, when you think you're at your peak and then you're out for a while, 
how do you get back there quickly? This is a tough matchup. Macy, you know, look, on the Ultimate Fighter show, she was the heavy favorite to win. She just fought Marion Renault in her last fight, won by decision. Now, I'm not saying Renault is obviously at the top of the mountain neither, but stylistically, Macy will be the better striker. And if in the scrambles, Macy ends up on top, Aspen's got nowhere to go. Where Aspen succeeds is when she's on top in the guard. And I don't know if she's going to easily get Macy down so quickly. I don't know how she bounces back off for a double knee surgery and be gone for a year. For that reason, we're going to take this is going to be our Chiefs dog of the day. All right. <laughs> that caught me by surprise. Wow. Too. wow. Okay. Yeah. Continue. Him just run by the window right there, right? Uh, so, so plus 165, we're going to go with Macy Chieson. Her number has actually already came down. I believe she started off at plus 180. But I think the time off for Aspen, the knee surgery, and because of the styles here, I like Macy in this fight to get the upset. I absolutely love it when we have a Chiefs dog of the day on the show. I love it. It makes me feel good. All right. We have arrived at the main event of the evening. And what makes great main events are rivalries, storylines, rooting for one, not rooting for the other, baby face, heel, whatever you want to call it. We've got all of that this week. And Mr. Sandhagen, Corey Sandhagen, he makes no bones about it. Yes, he lost to Aljamain Sterling, but he wants to be the best. He wants to be in the Hall of Fame. He said, I want to have an SB. I want it all. Well, if he's going to get it all, he has to win this week against TJ Dillashaw, who's already been to the top of the mountain fallen off, and he wants to get there again. Storylines. That's what makes a great main event. Sandhagen, currently minus 195. TJ Dillashaw in a place that he's not used to being. The underdog. A significant underdog at plus 165. Ian Parker, what do you like? Well, it just goes to show you how many people are believing in Sanhagen's skills and not really believing that TJ is going to be TJ without being on EPO. Sanhagen originally was minus 175. This is this is climbing. I think it's going to go higher. So if you are going to be on Corey Sanhagen, the time is now. I'm hoping that people believe in TJ so it goes lower. I, I texted you that earlier in the week, right? So Corey Sanhagen, very – the brightest prospect I've seen in a long time in this division. Got got up the ranks really quickly. No one was questioning his style. This guy was out grappling Rafael Asuncao when no one was able to do that. All right? Mm -hmm. This guy comes into a fight. Now, with the Aljamain Sterling fight, everyone, a lot of people thought he was going to win. When you get finished that quickly, sometimes, and that's your first time to get to the top of the mountain, you question yourself. Is this the right training? Did I do the right thing? Or, hey, I made a mistake. I learned from it. I move on and I get better. Not only has he gotten better, he's doing things he wasn't doing before. He's finishing people quickly. Now, yes, is Frankie Edgar the same Frankie Edgar we once saw? No, but that doesn't take away from Sanhagen flying kneeing him into the shadow realm. All right? Not at all. Corey Sanhagen is excellent on the feet. He's got that Dominic Cruz type of style where he's unpredictable with his striking. His grappling, he's comfortable everywhere. His cardio, and he's got such good range. I love him in this fight. I really do. And he's getting TJ at the right time. Two years ago... EPO TJ, and I hate to keep saying that, but listen, it's the truth. It is what it is. Okay. Nobody was faster than TJ except for Cejudo who caught him. Okay. But in this division, people weren't matching his speed. They weren't matching his cardio. And when EPO does do it, it allows you to go harder, stronger, faster, and heal quicker. It's the truth of the matter. If if he's going to beat TJ, now it's a time where he's at his best TJ off of this long of a layoff. He's never had this type of layoff in his entire career dating back to when he was wrestling. Not once ever. So I don't know if, you know, listen, ring rust is a thing. Some guys can mentally block it out. Can he? I don't know. He's got a lot of factors here. He wants to prove people that this is in the past. If he gets finished very quickly, he's going to be reminded of this past. Okay. So he's got to survive, not just win. He's got to put up a good fight, but of all times to do this, pull the trigger on Corey Sanhagen. I think he's the next champion in this division. And at minus 195, give me Corey Sanhagen, coach. We saw it last week with Misha Tate. She had a very slow first round and then picked it up. TJ Dillashaw cannot afford <laughs> a slow first round against a guy like Corey Sanhagen. Man, I am fired up for this fight and for this main event. All right, we're up against it. Grab your paper, grab your pencil. Here we go. Parker's Parlay looks a little something like this. Eubanks, Giannis, Phillips, Giving you a return of plus 151. Then we're on Soriano, minus 110. Maverick, minus 150. Chase on as our Chiefs dog of the day in the co-main event. And then Corey Sandhagen, minus 195. Also, 
I have forced Ian Parker to hold one back, to save a best bet. And on Saturday, just prior to the fights, he will release that bet on his Twitter account. So go there, follow him, Ian Parker MMA, and you'll get that added best bet in your feed. Notifications, turn them on. All right. Man, I am fired up for this week if you couldn't tell. You have got your marching orders. I don't know what else you want. Five and one, parlay. Four and one, parlay. Combate, best, be, best bet. I could go on and on, but I won't. Let's take all these tickets straight to the pay window. It's been very, very busy lately, and Saturday it's going to be busy again. For Ian Parker and the entire Duck Army, our executive producer, our EP, the jeweler, I am the coach. It doesn't matter the sport or the day. We're here for you. We grind. A, we like to call it the early edge. Good luck. Do you want best bets in your feed every single day? All you have to do is hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things early edge.